Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at how I wrote my dissertation using Notion. So this window, oops, here is my uni hub that I used when I was at university. And I have all my modules along the side. Um, but this is where I planned my final year project. That other one will be a different video at some point. But for now, I'm just going to go into how I wrote my dissertation. We just called it degree essay, but it's basically a dissertation, except mine was only like 4,000 words, so it wasn't too major. Um, straight away, we've got some of the properties here that I used just to, this is more for like grade calculation, but it didn't really apply to this because this is more of a planning thing than an actual module. This was a little widget from indify.co, which was just a countdown to when my essay was due. Then we have my uni inbox. So this was like a, using the Notion web clipper, anytime I found like um, an article that was related to my degree essay, I'd clip it and then make sure it went to my uni inbox as opposed to my normal inbox that was just for personal stuff. And then what I do with that is just put it into my sources. But I don't think I got to these ones, or I did, but I just didn't take them out. I don't know what this is. I wrote that, like, at the start of the year and never got rid of it. Um, but this is where I put all of my tutorials. Um, so this is actually part of a bigger database that has, like, all, all of my lectures in. But as you can see, it's filtered by... Um, degree essay and then tutorial versus like lecture so what I would do in my um, tutorials is I just do like a little voice recording when I was because it was all over zoom so I'd voice record it so that I could just listen to what my tutor was saying and then um, afterwards I'd put the voice recording in here and then I'd listen and I'd just make notes um, on like what she said. And I'd literally like do my voice recording and then I'd make a to-do list so that I knew like, so I didn't just have it and then forget about it. So I knew what I had to do. Literally got one that says make a to-do list. Because so <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure that I stayed on top of things. So this was really helpful for me. It says that it's zero, but... If I actually start playing it, it might say how much it actually was. Yeah, 13 minutes. So I think that's about accurate because I think my tutorials were 15 minutes. Um, I'll go into all of this stuff in my like, main uni video. But for now, it's just sort of how I wrote my degree essay. So, yeah, these were all things that I could just come back to like whenever I was writing it and I remember that something that I'm curious about was discussed in a tutorial, then I can just go back into here and find it. And they're all labelled and they've got the dates as well, so it's just easy to find um, what I'm looking for. Then here is just a link to my like bibliography website that just helps me like write my bibliography because <laughs> there's so many like rules. And you can just set this one to like the right... Um, I forget what it's even called now, but make sure it was the right like style that my university wanted. Then I have this, which was just when I was like coming up with ideas for my um, dissertation, but I won't click on it because it was literally just like a checklist. Um, then I've got my study net link. So that was um, literally just a link to the course page so that if I ever needed to double check something like that I hadn't written in here already, I could just click that and it would take me to it. So then I have sources and notes. Um, I don't know why it's double S. But yeah, this is sort of what was the game changer for me in terms of writing my dissertation. This one, um, as you can see inside, like when I click it, I've got who wrote it. So that's just easy to know. Like if I'm like quoting them or something, I can just quickly look and remember who wrote it. Um, the login, the login, the URL to where I found it, just so that I don't have to have tabs open all the time. I can just go, oh yeah, okay, I want to look at that one now and click it. 
the type of like sauce that it is um i just put different options sometimes i find them but i think they would be good to read but couldn't like actually access them so i'd do that and then maybe if my lecturer could get access for me or something then i'd have a list of the ones that i could ask for the source type um mine were mostly secondary but that's just bit in the nature of the articles i was reading um drafts i didn't really use this in the end um so i'm not sure what um the date i found it because you have to sometimes write that in your bibliography like the date you first accessed it or used it the source just because um with ebooks or stuff that's online you have to write the day you accessed it in case they edit it and then what you've quoted is now wrong um and then yeah the ones that i used it for abandoned if I click that, it like takes it away because sometimes I just realised that the source that I had put in wasn't actually useful. So it's good to keep the relevant stuff here, like that says current. So my filter just says where abandoned isn't there. And then the topic. So um, I sort of based my essay into... It was based on three different shows and then three different... The shows were related to the networks. Um, and it was sort of judging how, like, does the network influence the representation of disability on the show? So when I was looking at my sources, I would just um, tag it by what it was talking about, just so that if I needed to look at a source that was related to HBO, then I don't have to sift through everything else. I can just find the ones that are talking about HBO. Um Another related draft, I, I don't know what that was for. Uh, and then when I would be reading um, my sources, to save myself just, like, going up, back to it over and over again, I'd just, like, copy the stuff that I found interesting. I wouldn't actually, like, copy that word for word, because obviously that's plagiarism, but it was just more to, like... And if I couldn't be bothered to type it, <laughs> I'd just screenshot it. But then you, it saves yourself going back, because some of these chapters are just, like... 40 pages long or just something stupid and it, you know you don't want to make like more work for yourself because it's already a lot of work anyway so just to have it all in here and then I can just go back to it because I'll be like oh what did that I know that source had something related to that and then you just write in so yeah I had that was basically all my sources um research I don't know why and there was a lot that I abandoned like I don't even I don't think I've got access to a lot of them or that that was stuff that my original essay was going to be about but then I sort of changed my angle um so yeah I basically did that for all of my sources just would write the stuff that I thought I could use in my essay oops um yeah so then I could have that open whilst I was writing I think I actually so down here I've got drafts and that was basically when I was just writing ideas for paragraphs not really writing paragraphs like I didn't fully write everything in Notion I, I mostly wrote it in Word but when I had ideas for stuff like Glee Draft 1 I'd have like just how I was gonna actually write it just so that all the sort of thinking about what you're going to write is done so then when it comes to writing you can just focus on making it coherent and whatever you've got the notes that you want to make um so yeah that is that and then I think also here I just put like just plans as well like it didn't have to be stuff that was actually a hard draft of my essay and then that's just a random link that I didn't use <laughs> I didn't tidy that up um and when I was I think t timelines had just been released when I was doing my essay or they were released like I think it was that year some somewhere along this line and funnily enough my lecturer had li literally made a timeline it was on a powerpoint but I just copied all the dates of when like things needed to be done by so that I could sort of keep track I don't think it's like the best use of a timeline 
Um, and I think I had it filtered so that when I'd done it, it would disappear so I could just have it nice and short. And I think at the time you could only have three timelines in the whole of your notion. Um, but anyway, so that was just like a more visual way. So yeah, that's how I use Notion specifically for a projects like writing an essay or doing my dissertation. Um, in my next video, I will go into how I used Notion just for my whole degree, um, including my grade calculator, which I do have videos on if you're interested in. This whole workspace is available on my Gumroad, which is linked below. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Any questions, um, comment them down below and I will hope to get back to you soon. Thanks.